in a video that was featured, I can't remember whose channel, maybe it was Eve or Molly, um, it was a while ago, uh, that you were talking, you were sort of discussing YouTube, you were sort of doing, playing a few games, you were eating like McDonald's, and everyone in the comments loved, loved you in that video. Oh yeah, me and my ketchup bowl. Yeah, remember? yeah, they loved you. <laughs> um, and they got onto a piece of conversation where they were talking about um, them as creators sort of reaching their peak, as it were, they felt like, that they were in that generation of YouTubers across, you know, GCSEs and A-levels that, that they'd sort of personally reached that peak um, and whether they were going to perhaps stop YouTube. They, you know, you went on to that, that topic about that. And obviously you then ended up actually stopping YouTube. I think that video came out a year in that period that you, that you actually stopped. Mm -hmm. um, when, when did you decide that, that, that perhaps YouTube wasn't something that you wanted to pursue anymore? I don't think there was, you know, a decisive day. Um, it was over that year period where I'd sort of go on the group chat and be like, guys, like, don't think this is for me. I don't have any motivation to do this. Someone's being mean on social media and it just, it's not motivating me to do anything. Um, and then I think, you know, I was in a toxic relationship at the time and I think that was just my year of, deciding stuff I was like I don't want to be in this relationship anymore don't want to do YouTube I do want to do gig photography um and I just think that's normal isn't it like just it's a normal yeah. part of growing up and if you don't have a YouTube channel you will have similar thoughts about things when you're like 18 you're going to be deciding about who's your friend who's actually not your friend uni choices whatever so yeah, I probably thought about it over that year period, really. Did you ever did you ever wish that it had been more successful than it than the, than let's say it had been or matched the success level of people that you were friends with? Oh, for sure. Like I think if I was that successful, I would have kept it going. It's just people don't realize how much effort goes into making a video and trying well, to get tell me it. about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, trying to get it seen trying to get it on the algorithm trying to get on like the main page or whatever and i'm very jealous i'm very envious of my friends um lifestyles because unfortunately i've had to work a normal job as a lifeguard um you know scrubbing toilets sometimes um you know properly like breaking a sweat cleaning and having to be in a work environment for 12 hours at a time whereas these guys mm. get paid a lot of money um and go on holidays flexibly don't have to ask for annual leave sort of like have a lot more freedom yeah. um so yeah for sure like if i was more successful i'd probably probably would have kept it going i am i'm not afraid to say that i am jealous of my friends because they have a sick life <laughs> Not saying that I don't have a sick life, but no, I'm very envious. I know what you mean. Yeah. It is appealing. It uh, is really appealing. I think appealing. to a lot of people. Um, but I mean, I've been finding out a lot more about the behind the scenes stuff of YouTube, what it's like to be like that. And it's not always fun and no, games and not. stuff like that. Um, has it ever, I mean, I'm not looking for like tea here, um, but has it ever gotten to a point where you've been that jealous or that envious about things that, that they're doing that it's maybe come to a head or... That you that you've that you've wish you you've regretted you've regretted something or um I don't think I've ever been like that jealous. It's just there's been I wouldn't say clashes. It's just there's been like visible differences between having sort of a normal job and being a YouTuber. Like for example, when we're all planning a holiday, there's like two of us, me included. Um, who find it very hard to be able to just like dedicate to a holiday because we have to ask for annual leave. We have to make sure we have enough money in the bank. Um, mm. You know, there's a lot more planning involved on in going on a holiday with my kind of job. Um, and that's only when it sort of, you know, comes about. And then there's also like fear of missing out because a lot of the time you actually can't go on a holiday or you can't see your friends because of it. Um, so it's not like jealousy. Like I wouldn't be like, oh, you can't believe you have a YouTube channel, can't believe you're doing this to me. Like, I'd never do that because that's just silly yeah. and, like, that's not how I yeah. feel. It's just, you know, it's frustrating. That's what I'd say. Like, it's frustrating that I don't have as much freedom because I love seeing them. They're my absolute babes. Like, I wish I could see them more. It's mm. just unfortunate. 
Yeah. I mean, <laughs> speaking about going on holiday, like they probably they probably get it paid for if they if they mm, asked for sometimes. it. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes they do get a paid holiday, so Yeah, it's sick. Let's not let's not reminisce about no. them too much. <laughs> Back um, to me. This is my episode, Liam. <laughs> this is like joking that's me joking it's a chance to it's a chance to vent if you need it but i mean you don't need it you've you've you've, you know i think i think it's important to recognize the differences but also then not live live in the jealousy and live in like the i don't i don't like i i accept that this is my life it is i have full control over it um and i could have kept my youtube channel going i don't know how successful it would have become but like i made that decision i'm not a youtuber i'm a lifeguard End of. Yeah, it's frustrating, but it's my choice. Mm. It's a it's a certain it's a certain like transition to make. Um, a little touch. On, I wanted to little touch on um, the mental health side of of being a YouTuber and how you experienced it. And whilst you may not have been as uh, successful as your friends, um, how you sort of dealt with uh, any particular incidents that maybe come to mind that you recall. Um, you know what what maybe you've experienced whilst being a youtuber um the good and the bad like i'm not just looking i'm not just looking for for bad here don't get me wrong um but yeah how you experienced it what 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 did you you know what did um, you feel well i was quite fortunate when i had my youtube channel i didn't really get much hate um didn't really get trolled that much um because i feel like the trolls are quite jealous and I don't think many people are jealous of my channel you would be more jealous of Eve Bennett or Molly Thompson because of the numbers and the success that they have um but recently I've had someone harassing me on Instagram um about me being racist apparently because I don't post I don't post about every single like current affair ever oh Um, my god I had a debate with this with Jade. A question that I really wanted to ask you was, did you feel pressured to address the issues because of Mm. the influence you have and you felt that if you perhaps didn't address it, that people would Mm -hmm. assume that perhaps you don't support it or that if you did address Mm -hmm. it, but in the wrong way, you felt like you might get attacked for doing that Mm -hmm. because there was the full thing about the Blackout Tuesday uh, Instagram post. Yeah. There was the full controversy about how if you didn't post the yeah. black thing, you basically were saying, oh, it's not important enough. Or if you did post it, but then didn't also do a story saying, check out, you know, these articles and these yeah. things. And it's Stay like, for this. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you just yeah. posted it and did all of that, it's like, who knows what's fine and what's not? You know, it's like mm. everyone's attacking each other. Did you in that way feel like you were pressured to, to approach it? Or was it more of a case of you wanted to clarify your opinion uh, and, mm. and, and, and educate and, 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 and encourage yeah. people it's a great question you know how to know where that line was so it's really interesting that you're also experiencing something like that um yeah what, what what's happening with that well well i say that they've stopped but you just don't know but this person was making account after account after blocking them you know it's just just crazy like you have that much effort to harass someone um but basically saying that i was racist because i wasn't um posting about this issue and this issue and this country and i don't know i just think it's because people have more time on their hands because of quarantine i've never experienced anything like this and you know everything everyone that i've told this to has said this is ridiculous, like you post things that you're genuinely um, passionate about, you post a lot about current affairs on your Instagram stories, Um, it's very obvious that you care about social issues. Um, So yeah, just that got me really upset to be honest because I've never had anything Mm. like that and once again that was frustrating because they just kept making account after account and coming back for more, Um, but hopefully they've stopped now. Yeah, I hope yeah. so too. I mean, I think it's it's it's, it's always challenging to approach p- like current affairs because you'll never do enough in yeah. some people's eyes, and you know, y- y- you just can't gauge it very well in in the sort of bubble that is social media. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
I try personally not to approach it too much just because, you know, you, you feel like you're always going to say something wrong mm -hmm. that someone's not going to agree with. But then I was speaking to, to people on this podcast and they've argued the opposite of being like, you know, you shouldn't be afraid to say something wrong. At least you're trying to, you know, start a conversation. And if you are wrong, then at least you've got the opportunity to learn mm -hmm. from your mistakes if you're, if you're willing to do that. Um, but yeah, it's... it's uh, it's a difficult situation, especially if you're being harassed about things that you haven't said that people are twisting to make yeah. it look like you're what you're not, which mm -hmm. is, which is, I mean, you can't escape that in, in a way because, you know, you can't, you can't say that you're not something you haven't said. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you basically just gotta just ignore it and try yeah. and exactly and try and just avoid it. Just block them every time yeah. and just carry on. That's what I did, so. Yeah.